Well, I think all of them, Jackie, I mean, they give you a chance. They give the fly man a chance for the fish of a lifetime. You know? Like, we never know the next cast that goes here that either of us take, we could connect with a six or seven pound wild brown. Wild brown. Absolutely. In fact, I could even do it this cast. I've, um, I've always been guiding on Arrow, you know, um, but in the full time, probably the last seven years has been the really, you know, I've been at it non-stop. Um, and between Arrow and um, Loch Arden, Loch Melvin, we just have great fisheries around us. And um, Arrow is probably my favourite spot of the lot. Um, fishing is fantastic. Massive mayfly hatches, happy, happy clients. And it's just such a special place to be. You know, with, with the tree lines and with long, large weed beds, and and spent that then coming out then in the evening time, fish free rising fish up on them. It's just a special place to be. The tree flies we're going to be starting today was we're going to be using the Fairy Brown Stimulator from from the Fuller Mill Hothead, which has been working pretty well lately. In the middle, we're going to be using Melvin Daddy, the size 10, in the middle. And on the point, we're going to be using a size 10 Silver Daddy from the Fuller Mill collection again. And both of these tree, tree flies are, are constantly catching for us. I've the cast up, Jackie, and I've listened to you. <laughs> Gone for two X. <laughs> right. First, when I asked Jimmy, told me there was flies. Yeah. But, uh, so I go two X. I was going to go up to the one X, uh, but you reckon there's no need? No need, Tom. No need. No need. No. Mm. There's good strength in that uh, master class. Really good strength mm, in it, yeah. Tom. I've been, I've been, I've been using it for the last six months, Tom, and it's. Yeah, I love I it's, 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 what, it's what I generally use yeah. anyway. It's just when you told yeah. me the, the, the couple of big fish, yeah. We've we've had double hookups on it, Tom, and it hasn't broke, yeah. hasn't let me down this year. So, I agree with it, yeah, I absolutely. Agree. You know, and even you know, you convinced me there to change across to it a long time ago, and it's it's worked, it's worked. And why change anything? So, I'm going to start off with uh, traditional. I'm going to put um, I'm definitely going to put a silver dabbler on the point, uh, just in case this fry around. And uh, probably put a wake fly on the top dropper. Probably go stimulator on the top dropper. Um, it's a bit bright. It's forecast to cloud up. It so is. I don't know whether to go you'll bright. Be, yeah. I'll keep in the weeds all day today, Tom, so you'll be yes, you yeah. need some weedless flies. Too, yeah, so well, yeah, little <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. Oh, I'm really looking forward to it. Jackie, what is this buzzer doing here? Uh, that's one of yours, Tom. <laughs> Put it away quick. <laughs> Right, so on top dropper, I'm going to stimulate her. I'm going to go, definitely go the silver dabbler on the point, and I'll probably go. I'll go a different color to the stimulator. I'll probably go with them, olive. the olive stimulator on the top, and I'll go something a bit darker on. I will try claret dabbler at some stage, so I might set up with one. I think I'm going to set up with that. What are you going up with? Flies. Uh, see, <laughs> see, Tanya, Tanya. Really? I have um, fairy brown top dropper. Is this uh, recording now? He's actually saying it. Very brown top dropper. I have in the middle, I'm putting the daddy, 
yeah. uh, Melvin Daddy, and then right. the point I'm going to put on the silver right. Daddy. Because the winds here the last day, few days have been strong, so... A lot of daddies around. There's a lot of daddies around. A lot of daddies around. So, we'll start off with that. Yeah. And a couple of weedless flies for you, Tom. So. And I'm afraid to ask this now, what, what line are you on? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to dye it before I go out. <laughs> so you won't see it. <laughs> Well, we've, we've started off the first drift of the morning. There's green banks around this. Good weed bed ahead of us. So basically we're going to start pulling so, um, some daddies and stimulators across the top of the water here. Hopefully, hopefully that one will come up and have a bite. Um, we're not in very deep water uh, here at the moment. And there's a bit of weed underneath us as well. And hopefully one of the pike don't come up and have a, a snap at our flies but um, usually that's very rare here for Loch Arrow and um, I like I like to start off in this just 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 this drift here first thing in the morning it's one of my drifts This whole bay is shallow enough, Jackie, I'd say, is it? Yeah, it's shallow enough here, Tom, so it is going out. Um, it deepens off about halfway out there to about 70 foot, so it does, Tom. Yeah. And do you find that, do they hold to the reeds? The, fi the fish hold up because there's a river behind us as well, and, and this time of year it can be very, very good, Tom, so there's right. a, lot, a lot of people just drive by it first thing in the yeah. morning. You know, it's that sort of thing, I need to get up to the top of the lake quick, fast. Yeah. But like the fish hold up in this bay, so they do. You'll see it in the evening time on on buzzer and that, you know, uh, dry buzzer and that, and even green peter. You don't you don't have to go too far, you know, for the green peter fishing either, Tom. You know. Yeah. We should be coming across now. We'll be coming across slightly deeper water now in a minute as well, and usually that kind of black water, mm. the brown trout likes to hold up on as well. Do you find that as well, Tom? You know, in the carb. Yeah, they do actually. Finding a lot at the moment. That, I don't know if you're getting it here, but they're, they're shoaling up quite a bit on yeah. carp. Yeah, same here, Tom. Yeah. So there. yeah. You'd normally always, like, throughout the year, you get shoals of small fish. But, like, this time of the year, the bigger fish just tend to congregate together. Yes. And I'm, find, I'm finding, too, you know, very close in the shore this time of year, Tom, um, the roach seem to be playing a bit of effect, too, at the moment, so they do. Um, yeah. They seem to be pushing the trout slightly out as well so even though the trout are feeding on them but they're actually pushing them out into slightly deeper water wow that that's kind of interesting isn't it yeah yeah but it's very good like especially these wee beds here tom you know in the back of it yeah yeah it's good like you know you get the, the bit of calm water and ambush has there been much sedge jackie like the daytime sedge there, there in August, Tom, it was excellent. It was the dry fly fishing was just excellent, you know. Yeah, but you then, were saying that, yeah. But then, <laughs> this good weather came in, like you know, a lot of people. <laughs> you wouldn't say too loud, you know, but we don't really want it as fishermen, you know. Um, but um, it was really, it was really, it was really good, Tom. It was yeah. really good fishing. So it was. It was really good. Like I always find it on carb, like particularly this time of the year, you never really know what you're going to get no. on a September day. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. You just don't know what's going to come up. Because you can still get a hatch, yeah. a sage, you can get it one day yeah. and nothing the next day. Yeah. 
Now you can get a fall of daddies, which we're hoping for today. We're hoping for today. And even like the last few days, I've seen a lot of uh, olives around as well at the moment. Actually, too. have you? I was going yeah. to ask that, yeah? Yeah, I've seen a lot of olives around the last few days as well. Yeah. I've put one on the cast, you know, on the dry, small dry olive. But, right. You know, they seem to be picking that kind of uh, sedge and, and daddies seem to be what they're kind of more attracted to. But look, listen, that could change overnight here, yeah. like, you know? You still have to give one a run throughout the day. Yeah. Have you fished the deeper water much in it, Jackie? Here, Daphne has. There, there is, there is Daphne lads in it, Tom. Like the same as I, I think Daphne lads are in area all the lakes in Ireland, Tom. And um, there's probably just not enough people doing it on Arrow. You yeah, know, um, I've caught them. You, you've caught them on arrows before, Tom, with me, if you remember. That's right. It was September. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> that, was, big. that was my momentous day on uh, on arrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. But um, you know that day, I think w there was a lot of fish rose, and only one or two got that day, if you remember, Tom. Yeah. You know that's the that's the thing. Like there's days there they they absolutely go mad for the fly, but. They seem to come up with their mouth closed. See that? Fish up to you, you see there that? straight away, yeah. Tom. Hit me and follow Gone. it again. And I'd say he was a good fish too by the looks of him, Tom. Yep. Oh, I did that wrong. He came up to you again. He did? Yeah. I, I hung it. Yeah. I hung it for him and he had a jab at it. Yeah. I think he was more interested in who tied the fly, Tom. <laughs> they're taking it <laughs> oh yeah have him he travelled after that you were just trying to get an excuse for the I was yeah I was trying to keep you into the weed he's a good fish Tom alright yeah If he wants to run, you just let him run, basically. You know, he, he is the control. And um, like I know the fluorocarbon is strong we have on, but it's it's a very weedy bottom there underneath us, so it is. And you can see the head shakes there, you know. He just, um, he followed me, followed me, and I just lifted slightly and left it, and he just came up. And he's a good fish. Yeah. Excellent, come on. And we're off. Some teeth on them. Oh, he's away. <laughs> he followed me the whole way to the boat. And I could see him coming after with the mouth open. And I just stopped it and hung it and he just grabbed it. And he's left me in a MS, but sure, it's worth it. It's worth it. Like, I, I find it, you know, on the Mayfly Tom, that a lot of people make the mistake, especially on the dries, that they throw over the fish that has rods. Yeah. It, like, if it's river fishing, Tom. Uh, because that fish in the river seems to just come up, take the fly, and go back down yeah, again. Yeah, it's stationary. But the lake, the lake trout are totally different. Mm. They're, they're they're moving. They're searching for that, that food. Ya, searching. If the food is if the food is coming to them, yeah. they'll move up against it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Upwind, like you know. Yeah. And I, I find a lot of people make that mistake. You know. Yeah. It's basically it's a guessing game at, at times. What way that fish is going to turn and move? I, I've often seen a fish coming, coming up the drift, coming, 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 and, and you throw your line out. And he goes either left or right at times. So yeah. it's just, in my eyes, you have to kind of guess, you know, what direction he's going to go, you know. And then again, you know, if he gets so close to the boat, he's he's going to move away from the boat anyway. Mm. So he is. The boat will scare him. I generally find that their big trout generally are on their own. But there are times that they'll, if they're after fry, 
that they'll work together. You find that, Jackie? Yeah, absolutely, Tom. They'll show up on them. They'll show up and work as a team to crash through the fly, fry and disable them. Uh, like that fish we saw earlier on. Big fish pitching. It was probably crashing through a shoal of fry. And what they do is they land down on top of them and they stun the fry. And the fry are shocked. And um, a lot of them will float up momentarily. But it's at that moment that they're vulnerable. Fish can come back and just pick them off. You know, it's this sort of fishing that you can't really do anywhere else in the world. Pulling through waves and dabbling those flies across it and waiting for that fish to come up there like this morning and just completely bang into the flies, let's say, you know. What would you think, Tom? Yeah, it's all about, it's kind of unique, Jackie. Yeah. You know, our style of fishing. I don't too many places in the world where you try it or where it's fished successfully. Uh, it's just something about it, isn't it? Like, you're fishing for wild trout, wild brown trout. They've been here since the last ice age. Uh, all the big lakes here that we have in Ireland, it's virtually all of them are, are on um, wild trout. And I think that's the attraction as well. Yeah. Definitely, you know, yeah. and, and good sized fish. Yep. You've seen this morning. I mean, you just saw <laughs> the fish that you call small. Yeah. As we said, like in a lot of places, that's that would have been a decent, a decent trout. <laughs> yeah. I uh, says, as I says, only around the two pound, I would have said, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's the style. It is Definitely the style. the style brings a lot of people back, ripping those flies through the surface and, you know, the splash or the pull or that follow that Tom yeah. got there this morning, a couple of follows, and it just brings people back for the likes of that. You like, know? It's, it's not easy fishing. No, it's not. It's not easy fishing. I mean, we're sort of bearing testament to that at the moment, but, you know, you will get your red letter days you know that can happen and if you come back and every you know all everything falls in line and you can have red letter days here but more often than not you, you work hard for your fish but when you do get them uh they're absolutely just fantastic beautiful looking fish The tree flies here seems to be the, mm. definitely seems to be the, the big thing here. You That's know. for your pulling, like for, for your wets? Absolutely, for, yeah. for pulling for wets, for my but, dries. But, but when you go back to Melvin then, what will you fish? I'm actually going back to tree, would you believe oh, yeah. I'm actually going back oh, yeah. to tree on Melvin That's interesting well. now. Yeah, I'm actually going back to tree on Melvin as well. Because if I go back to Melvin, I, I still would <laughs> make up a cast for four. Would you? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm actually going the, the opposite way around. Yeah. Which for me was just a kind of a big change. Yeah. But I found my, I found I was moving more fish with the tree flies, you know? Interesting. I was found I was moving more fish with tree flies and uh, I think I was working the flies better as well. Yeah. You know, than the four. Yeah, kind of agree with you there that it's easier to work tree yeah. flies. Yeah. The way, and this is often a little secret of wet fly fishing. People think it's just chucking it out and pulling it back, but there is a way of working your flies yeah. back and you know that absolutely yeah you know um like fish will follow you right yeah. up to the boat right, to the, this morning yes was just yeah you know that fish your fish followed you right to the my boat. fish hit me straight Sh yeah as my flies absolutely. landed yeah yeah uh, i took it retrieved all the way in yeah hung stopped and yeah. hit again where I had the skill when he came in the that's whole it. way. Yeah, so the difference was, <laughs> you hooked yours, I landed him. And, and we're still talking it. about mine. And we're, yeah, yeah, we're yeah, still yeah, talking yeah. about Tom's one. Yeah, it's only half time, Jack. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, you know, and you're going down the weed bed for the second I'm, half. And we've spotted the fish just out here, actually, yeah, yeah. And I've dibs on him. <laughs> uh, on dries, then, I am kind of two mm. in, in, in a, a ripple, or a nice ripple. I'd be two, general, mm. generally. Yeah. And then in a very very calm conditions or just a slight ripple i'm down to one yeah straight away and then my tip leader is right down yeah 
even the three, the, f- the four pound. Yeah, five, five, yeah, five, five point five x. Yeah, and we we're talking about this. Yeah, I think we both do on those fine days. We will use a tapered leader. Absolutely, then, a tapered leader yeah. is a must. Yeah. for turnover. Yeah, a definitely, a definitely a must for yeah. turnover. Yeah, no, I'm I'm the same uh, setup. Now some guys fish three dries. Yeah, I don't like it. I think it looks unnatural, uh, as they say. Absolutely, you know, unnatural. <laughs> So it's like giving them a selection box, but they're going to refuse. I think three <laughs> flies, you know. And not it, all of us would refuse. It, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I genuinely think that they're too. The flies are too close together. Yeah, I agree with you. The, the, and, and they're not fishing properly. Yeah, because we were saying in the boat today. Like, I, I think you're the same on your dry setup for lock style with the twos. Yeah. Generally, at least eight foot apart. Absolutely. Yeah. So. And, and you can fish them properly. Yeah fish them right working uh, them again like, like, yeah, yeah. Dr- like dry fly fishing is to me is totally different than, than the wet fly end of it mm. I think there's that little bit more skill in it it's presenting that fly that doesn't mm. splash on the surface you know uh, that you every drift that you you degrease your your line mm. which is very important with the mud to me it's very important and what Steve sent me over stuff this year the powder and I, I started adding that every drift. I had the powder left there yeah. in the guiding boat. I say, lads, you know, mm. put the flies in, dry them quickly, yeah. and we we're back on the next route and have the mud going the whole lot. And that definitely made a difference, you know. Yeah, it does actually. Yeah, and it's funny you should say that. I mean, there is there is different elements to dry fly fishing, and you said it there. Maybe it's a skillful thing, but generally in dry fly fishing, you have to hook the fish. Absolutely. Because in wet fly fishing, when you're pulling. Yeah. Quite often, the fish hooks yeah. himself, or Absolutely. just as as byproduct of you pulling, yeah. you set the hook. Absolutely. But and that brings us back to tippet material as well. If you have to hit the fish, if you've any bit of slack, that's where you need the good tippet material. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's a big one. Yeah. And ducking is another big one. When sometimes when they strike so hard, yep. I don't know. You find that. Yep. Yep. You know, ducking. Mm. But when you duck, the flight. The mm. <laughs> you know, it's just just one of those things. You know, dry fly fishing is a skill in itself. Mm. Uh, as going out pulling wets and bring bringing that fly across the surface. It's yeah, because like before we'd say like, because some people say oh there's more to dry fly than wet fly, but like it's not always the case. We touched on it there. Like no. there's, there's there's work on your wet flies. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you have to, you have to work that fly right back to the boat. Got to fill the fish. And you have to fill the fish. Mm. Like that fish can follow you right yeah. in, right into the boat. Like the one that followed me that didn't take, and absolutely. the one that followed you and took. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> That's me working the fly right jacket. It is, yeah. <laughs> Up until now, both myself and Jackie have been sinking, fishing the same uh, rate sinkers. So just see, we'll go down a bit further, the DI3, which sinks a little bit more than the fast intermediate. See, will it have any difference? Yeah. He's taking a good bit of line out. Or isn't in the stock jacket in case it would fall off. Yep. 
Fish. Oh, good fish. He just hit me like a. Yeah. It's a bit of weight in him, Tom. There's plenty of weight in Jackie. Look, it's in him. Just the drag on your reel, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, exit Jack. Whoa. Whoa. Cracker. Cracker. Man. Good man. We were just coming down through the, the, the gap here, which we were just speaking about Tom and myself there a few minutes ago, between Lytles and the mainland. And there's a bit of weed bed, a shallow, deep water. And it was, Tom had changed across to the I tree. I stayed on the fast glass line. And um, it was second, third pull, and he just absolutely milled Tom's uh, dabbler, silver dabbler. He just absolutely, I didn't even have to strike him. He was just on. And thanks, Tom. <laughs> thanks, Jackie. Good man. Good man. Glad I changed. <laughs> and that's what people come to Ireland for. In a nutshell. <laughs>